Hi and welcome to the quick start guide for Disco Text. We apply the plugin to some text. At its default, we will see an outline being drawn here. It disregards what color you had set on the layer. However, we can draw the original layer if we tick composite over original there. And we can also choose the opacity of that. Start and an offset work very similarly to how they do in trim pass. So this should be very familiar. I'm gonna keyframe the end from zero to 100%. And then I'm gonna add some expo easing to that and you'll notice that all the paths are drawn at exactly the same time. Doesn't matter how short or long the path is, at 100% all paths will be completely finished. The offset here is not measured as a percent as the start and end is, it's measured as an angle, and this affects both the start and end, and this can go pretty much forever. Um, one full cycle of 360 degrees is a full loop. So a value of one spin or 360 degrees will give you the same as zero. Disco text is compatible with motion blur. We need to have it turned on in the layer and as well as in the composition here. The settings that it inherits are from the composition settings. Hit control K to get to that and go to advanced. So we can choose the shutter angle, which is uh, the duration of the shutter, which is essentially how much motion blur you're getting. We can choose the quality of that. So if I had a really long shutter angle, but only say four samples, you can see there's not enough samples and we can see the individual ones. So we might want to increase that. It also inherits shutter phase if you're really getting nitty gritty with the motion blur. Coming down to style here, we have color, which again, doesn't take the color of your layer. It's uh, just the color that you set here. The stroke width, pretty self-explanatory. Opacity controls the opacity for every path. And then the cap style here, this is pretty important. Uh, it defaults to butt, which just say if we trimmed this path here, it cuts off right there. Uh, square continues a little bit further. It continues the same distance as your stroke width. So I'm just gonna increase that there so that we can demonstrate that. That's gonna extend past the uh, trim 15 pixels. And uh, round does a similar thing, but it uh, is in the shape of a hemisphere rather than a square. Each of these has pros and cons. For example, round is not particularly good to start with because as soon as you start drawing, it's got the, um, the full sphere whereas butt and square don't have that issue. Butt is great if you've got a pretty thin stroke, but if you increase the stroke a lot, you might end up seeing these gaps here. And this can be solved either using square or if you simply offset this slightly, it's not gonna join at this problematic area, which um, solves the issue. You might also run into issues if uh, you've got a really thick line and you're using square, so offsetting that can fix it as well. Coming down to dashes, we can enable those. We have this option relative to scale, which is ticked by default. And if we increase this in size, you'll notice that relative to the scale of this layer is the length and gap. Whereas if we untick that and then we scale the layer, you can see that that's actually redrawing. Relative to the size of this layer, the dashes are actually much smaller. So we've given you the option of which one you like best. Again, this is very, very familiar to After Effects users to dashes that you see on uh, shape layers. We have a length that you can specify, say 20, and then how far is the gap between them, say 40, and then you can offset that as you please. And just note that the offset of dashes is measured in pixels, whereas the offset for the trim path is measured in degrees. As mentioned before, all these paths are drawn at the same time and they all start and end at the same time. However, we can stagger these and the stagger is measured in frames and the stagger accumulates per path. So we have two characters here, but we actually have three paths because they're always made up of two paths. So if we set the stagger to five, we will see the O draws first and then the K draws. You can change the order of that to reverse so that the K draws first or you could go random. And just in case the um, shutter angle wasn't enough for you, say, I want a shutter angle larger than 720. Well, we actually can't because that's an After Effects limit. However, we have a motion blur multiply here, which just allows easy access to exactly how much motion blur you want. Um, a value of zero being none, and then a value of one being the same amount as set in the shutter angle, and anything above one being a multiplier of that. Next up is the repeater. This is, we can generate copies and offset that. So I want 10 copies of this I'm gonna offset them, say 10 and 10. 
So per offset, I actually want the opacity to drop because we have 10 copies and each copy loses 10% opacity. By the time we get to the last copy, we barely can see it at all. Now we have relative to scale here turned on, which means it doesn't matter how large the layer gets, this offset is going to be relative to that. Whereas if we disabled that and then scaled it, you would see that that gives a very different look. We also have the option for these copies to inherit stagger. So if we turn that on, we'll notice that each copy is being staggered. So that's the result that we get if we animate it on with inherit stagger. Whereas if we disable that, the copies receive the exact same stagger as their original path. You can also do things such as rotation per copy. And you'll notice that that happens based on the anchor point of the layer. So we can move that, offset it. We can also do things such as scale. And the great thing about this is that because Discotext is drawing each one of these new copies, it's going to draw it at the native resolution. It's not going to simply take the original path and then up-res it. It's going to draw a new path at the correct resolution. So it doesn't matter how big the scale, the resolution is going to be perfect. Now, sometimes the anchor point of your layer may not be where you exactly want these offsets to have their anchor point or their transform anchor points based off. For example, if you need the anchor point of this layer to be up here for some reason, because that's how it animates in, then you may want to offset the anchor so that your scale looks good. And these anchor offsets, unlike the other transforms here, are not per copy. It's just a one-off offset. Whereas each copy of this loses 10% opacity, the anchor point doesn't keep changing by 800 each copy. Another thing you can do per copy is change the stroke width. So if we increase this per copy, we'll see it gets thicker. Whereas say if we started with a really thick line, we could decrease that per copy, which gives it an interesting effect. So that's the general rundown of Disco Text. So I pray you go forth and create some awesome typography.